Hello, happy campers. As I mentioned on the latest uh, video that we just made, they're going to camping at uh, Luke or Drifta Stockton's place. Uh, he took us for a one-on-one -on -one personal tour of his factory. And as I also mentioned, I didn't know what to expect. So it's, there's so much there and so much more than I could ever have expected. Here's the thing, there was nothing rehearsed. Uh, that basically just me turning on this camera and following Luke around. He, you know, following him turning on light. So there's a little bit of underexposure in some places. Uh, so that, and that was it. That's all we did was follow him around. So if you want to see Luke Drifter's setup, watch this video. Well, we're lucky enough to have a, a personal one-on-one -on -one site tour of the Drifter factory. Thank you. Still, Luke? Mate, welcome. Still a bit hungover from last night. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we had a good time last night. Yeah, so really uh, walk us through, buddy. All right. Well, this is the first block here. We've got four blocks, and um, I bought two blocks of land here. They were covered in trees. Or well, the last two blocks left in the, in, in the industrial estate because had trees everywhere, you know, big trees. So anyway, I always wanted to get a bush block, so it was perfect for me. But uh, we had to cut a lot down, and then we built this factory here. So this is our kitchen shed. Yeah, you know, we built most of it ourselves. Me and um, me and Dad poured all the concrete. When I first got into the shed, I couldn't afford the concrete out the front here. And because it's lower, it used to fill up with water all the time. And uh, for 12 months, we, we couldn't even have a concrete here. And I didn't even have a forklift for about 18 months. So we have to unload all the trucks by hand. And um, I built, I put that bench together. Well, so you actually work and do all this stuff right here? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was the only one to start Smells with. like paint. Yeah, yeah, these are freshly lacquered. So I worked here for about 10 years um, and uh, at this bench and then slowly got another bench, another bench, another bench and we extended this factory out that way twice. That was that was the wall there. Um, so we took the wall out twice. Dad, Dad helped a lot with um, the extensions. You know, back in those days you couldn't we couldn't even afford concrete or forklift, you know, you can't afford a builder. Uh, we put it out to here and then we kept growing, we put it out to there. You know, this kitchen still does exactly the same today is what it's always done really, build camping kitchens. So how many people work here? About a dozen in here. In here? Yeah. That's just in this shed? Yeah, we got, um, yeah, several factories. But camping kitchens and um, this is a, something we do a lot of now is is kitchens for the vans because the camping trailer market died off a lot um, so we do now a lot of kitchens for the vans up the top is our van fit out area and, and we supply kitchens here for our for that so if it wasn't you know you got to keep reinventing yourself all the time in business the original little camping kitchens um, don't make many of them anymore then it was all about the trailer kitchens these go on the camper trailers and we did that very busy for a long time and then the you know the imported trailers come in and took that market out and then we started doing a lot of drawers and, and, and kitchens for drawers so yeah anyway that's the little factory so what it was when people come in here doing fit outs for trailers and also four drives and the customers used to sit over near the red bin because this is a busy factory so they used to sit over there and um, one time I saw this couple sitting there and I thought it's so busy and noisy there I thought I need a little waiting room from the seat so I built this little area it's now a financial office, but uh, I built this just for the customers to sit and wait. And then we put a fire pit in there and a few chairs and uh, some products to sell. The next thing, a lot of people were, were buying the products and we put more products in there. The next thing we had families turn up in their four drive, a bunch of kids, like a couple of cars come to look at the shop. You know, they'd heard word of mouth got around. So we're an industrial factory with forklifts and everything. Next, all these people were coming into here to look at the stuff. And so that's when I got the shop in town. So I've got to get them out of here. So we went downtown. But this is our main business now is the drawers for the four drives. So uh, that'll, that's actually um, a police van. So we got a contract with the Victorian and New South Wales police to fit out their, their vans. So doing a lot of, the, a lot of those. Um, but this is our drawer factory. So. Yeah, I, I met a guy too, Beachy. Um, he's English from Wales. He was a backpacker. He turned up here looking for a little bit of work, and I gave him a, gave him a few jobs. And we got good mates and uh, very clever, 
very clever, very hard worker, hardest worker I've ever known, Beachy. And um, went back to England. He wanted to come back and work and live in Australia. And I literally said, well, I will make a couple of draws. And I reckon that if we, we didn't have a lot of draws, you know, we were selling. But if we make some, we might be able to keep you going, building draws. And then 10, 15 years later, we do 40 draws a week. And Beachy runs all that. So very busy with draws. That'll be in a Prado you know, for example, or a Ranger. We make drawers for all the vehicles. And it's very, it's just 12 mil, 12 mil ply, uh, very simple, but we've got some unique characteristics, unique design, which is our, our Teflon runners. Yes, yeah, so this is our draw factory. And then uh, we, we built this first and then it got busier. So then we uh, built this shed. And it's sort of what we've, we've been doing, you know, we just keep adding a factory on. So all this area in here is just for building drawers, so about 40 a week. And, uh, you know, that's going really good. And a lot of people want to get uh, fitted with their drawers. So I've got a lot of uh, fridge slides and fridges and cargo barriers and this factory here I built this for the camping trailers, the dot trailers. So we started building our own trailers and um, we had a guillotine and you know a folder and a little spray booth. So we made about 50 trailers in here, camping trailers. And so all up, how many people do you hire, Luke? There's a hundred here in Gloucester, manufacturing um, and, and office staff. And there's about 145 all up. We've got eight, eight stores now. So, um, so originally we just had the two blocks. And then I was able to buy this block and the next one. Probably would have been good if I just stopped here, you know. But um, it's hard, you know, if there's opportunity, it's hard to stop sometimes. But uh, we basically built those factories ourselves. We paid it off over about 15 years. And then we kept growing and built these factories, which are bigger factories, a lot more expensive. Um, you know, got into a bit of debt with this, we had to borrow the money and, you know, we're still going, but it's been, been a difficult few years. This is our dispatch area. So in, in there is a CNC machine, which cuts all the plywood. This is our receiving bay for our dispatch. So we've always sold, always sold a lot of gear online. Yeah, so this is our dispatch. Um, you can, we buy, we got a lot of products on our website. We've always had a website where we sell our stuff. So people can get on the website, buy their gear. It'll be printed off here Monday morning, packed and wrapped. And um, we I've even got stuff online from you. Yeah, packed here. Yeah. And above uh, the big very efficient. Name. I too. I, some people just take so long for you to, to get, receive your article, but you guys are really quick. Yeah, it's got to be it. Same day, if it's ordered before 12. And uh, that's all the different products. We've got a lot of imported stuff from Japan and different places, and this is all our canvas range. So we've got, um, canvas is a big part of the business. Um, we've got over 900 different canvas bags we supply. So you have a look at all the, the different bags. We've got so many of them. This is all just camping bags. Camping related bags. We put stuff in and literally every time I've, it's been just need a bag for this need a bag for that and just come in here and build one so and we're trying to you know we offer several colors you know there's two different camos three there's about eight different colors here so it's tricky to you know if you wanted an upright toiletry bag in camo well it takes a week to make it so but we've got it on the shelf here you know so it's hard though to to keep, it's very hard to keep the right amount of stock on the shelf because um, with, with manufacturing you've got to make a lot in one hit but when you've got a lot of colours it's hard to make everything just right but anyway. Trying to make everybody happy Yeah, that's the end of the day it's the, that's the overall goal in business is, is you know, if a customer's happy then you've, you've done a good job you know, that's, that's sort of all what it comes down to really So this is our Call the dot factory, but it's um. What's with the vans? We're doing a lot of van fit outs. All oh, right. Yeah, so fitting all these out. 
a very busy part of the business for us now, which is it's great work for us, you know, because um, you know we've done the kitchens we saw down the bottom there, original of the kitchens, and then we built the drawers. But when you do a van, there's you know drawers here, drawers there, and kitchens as well. So it's sort of a bit of everything we do. So um, you know we we. That's a, a big van. So we'll, we're going to, it's obviously a frame for something, I don't know what that is, but we'll line, line the ceiling, line the walls, insulate it, and then fit our drawers. But we can do very cost effective fit outs for people. You know, if you go elsewhere in Sydney and places, you can spend a lot more money. But um, yeah, you know, so this is our 12 volt division. So all the van, all the, all the four drives get a lot of electrical fitted. So. The electrical part of it's be, become a big, a big part. Fit a lot of Enerdrive and Red Arc and the good you know, stuff. Yeah, when when you put the drawers and kitchens in, you have to do the electrical at the same time, you know. So they mostly get us to do it, and uh, which works pretty good. Drawers. It's good, you know. Out on the weekend, it's quiet, so you can talk and that. But it's it's a whole different ball game during the week, you know. It's, it's so busy, there's people running around everywhere. It's like a little hot ant colony, you know, people are so busy. But uh, very noisy as well, so it's good on the weekend. You know, you can walk around and talk, but um, yeah, totally different when there's everyone here. This is our canvas sewing. This is all the sewing, huh? Good yep. gracious. Yeah, so this all started with just one sewing machine, one lady, and then um, progressively we've moved it a couple of times. And now it's a whole factory. Yeah, we're very busy in here. Yeah, a tricky one for me too because I'm, you know, I'm not qualified or anything, but I was d doing timber for a long time, and timber's sort of natural for me, but learning the textile industry was a whole new field. You know, you've, you've basically got to become sort of an expert in everything you make, and, and it's, you know, it's... Uh, Big learning curve? Big learning curve, but we just, you know, started off small like we do. This is a new thing for us here at the moment is the covers for the windscreens on the vans. So that's something we've just developed very recently and that's got insulation inside them. It goes on the outside of your van or your four drive, stops the sun and also the hail if it's hailing. So that's been a new thing we just developed. This is our cutting room here. So you need the canvas you need you know big areas of bench space which takes a lot of room you know. In this space here just to roll canvas out I, I could fit you know four benches building drawers easy you know and turn over five grand a week, 20 grand in this area and here it's just cutting canvas you know so that's that's a bit hard. This is something we just started recently is um, screen printing so we screen okay. print all of our own, all our own shirts now. Looking at that, I was wondering what the hell that was. Oh, so right. um, we're supposed to get two shirts from you. Yeah, screen print. That's the heater over there, and you basically screen print here, and that uh, burns it on. So we're just doing that now. More. This is all canvas cut, prepared, ready to get sewn. And this is... God, it goes on and on and on. This is our... Um, well, here we cut all the carpet for the drawers. And here's our CNC machine that cuts the canvas. So, yeah, it'll just uh, lay, lay it out in a big roll. And uh, this runs around, cuts it all for you. So somebody's here all day just cutting and preparing. All the canvas is um, wax and vertus textiles from Rutherford. So best canvas in the world and Australia's last remaining canvas company. We buy a lot of, we only buy wax best on camera, canvas. <laughs> best canvas in the world. Yep. Yep. That's a big you know, call. Yeah. And um, you know, well the Indians and the Sri Lankans and the Chinese they they don't um, 
you know, they make they can make good stuff, but they don't make as good as Waxcon. Americans, you can't buy a good canvas in America like this. And um, yeah, and this way we do the lights. So we manufacture these lights. This is a curved spreader bar for an awning, so it um, you know fits in a little awning. It's got a light in it, so we machine these out and. Um, yeah, light in there, they're called drifter power poles. So we do a lot of those. A lot of the gear here too, we've got, got the eight shops now too, so nearly all the gear we make, we also sell in the shops. Um, so it's all made right here? Yeah, not all of it, but as, as much as we can, you know. Yeah, well that's it, I suppose. Okay. So that's what it does. So that's a sheath for an axe. And you can see them over here. So we import these axes. Uh, that's from Sweden, the Holder Force 850. It's a really nice axe. Hand forged in Sweden. But we put the uh, strike guard on and the, and the uh, cover. So the company, Holder Force, makes a beautiful axe but a crap cover. And so that's what we do. So we do a lot of this sort of stuff. And that's, um, we used to cut this out just with a razor blade originally, me and Kaido. And then, um, and we do a lot of copper rivets as well. So we put all that together with these copper rivets, which is pretty cool. I learned how to do this in America. And um, it's a saddlery type thing. Anyway, that's once you've hammered that on, look at that beautiful big anvil. Cost me two grand that anvil. And, um, that's the result, these copper rivets that never come apart, you know. Very few people are doing that anymore, but... Um, but drifter is. Yeah, or drifter. Now belts. We make a lot of belts too. Beautiful um, business belts. Without, this is all Italian leather. So if you ordered a 44... What's with that? Why is that like that? Well, that's uh, when I was in the... I used to work up at the top end on cattle stations, and that's basically horse hobbles. That's uh, a lot of the ringers up the top end. The cowboys, they call them ringers, will have uh, a belt with a couple of rings in it, and that's for hobbling your horse. So, um, sort of just dual you know, purpose cowboy style, you know? Yeah. Well, you can get it without it. But you could order a belt in tan, black, brown, with that, without that, different buckles. Order that tonight, and we would make it on Monday and ship off Monday afternoon. And it'll be made right here. That's it. Very impressive, Luke. Oh, also here's some laser cutting. Laser machine. So we laser etch into leather a lot. And what people do, they send us a photo and we can make a stubby holder out of it. All right, so this is a laser etching machine and these are just some ones that weren't quite right. But people send us a photo of their, their fish or their grandchild or a, a trip. Put this in here, and we can laser print onto leather, which is pretty cool. Make stubby holders and lots of different things. That's very cool. Hmm. Well, I consider myself very lucky, Luke. Get a personal tour of all this. Yeah. I'm already lost. I, don't, I have no idea how to get out of here. Thanks very much for that You're private right, tour. Mate. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Pleasure. How lucky are we?